John in the motherfucking house. I got my dog GLT in the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm in the building. What the fuck is going on, Don't man? Talk TV. Let's make it happen. What's going on, brother? What's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm happy to be here, you know. Where you from? Where you from? I'm from Edenville, Florida, my brother. Born and raised, 1887 established, if you know anything about Edenville. You know anything about Edenville? I used to work in Edenville. All right, that's good. And yeah. also, you know a little something, something. Yeah, but. yeah. I worked in Edenville for a while. I was uh, I worked for Spectrum. Ah, uh, how'd right. you like it over there in the Ville? I, I, it was cool. Everyone showed love, man. It was like right next to the Tesla dealership. Oh yeah, so you was you was in there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I was there. You was in the Ville. You yeah. was not on the skirts. You yeah, was yeah, in yeah. The Ville. I used okay. to go to the little the little Family Dollar right there. Yeah, that little Family Dollar right across from where the school used to be. At matter of fact, shout out to eighteen eighty seven first man. Right now. Uh, my brother, he's got a petition going, trying to, uh, you know, they tore down the school. Really? Over there. Yeah, they're, they're, they're about to throw, you know, office buildings and condos and houses around the lake. So they, you know, basically the, the main thing is they're taking away the history. You know, once you start throwing all these businesses and everything, then there's no longer Edenville. Now it's Winter Park or now it's Maitland, you know, or it's Orlando, whatever they're going to want to call it. And Edenville means a lot. 1887 means a lot. And if you don't know... Check your history, 1887. See what Edenville is, man. Edenville was the first first piece piece of stuff we had. Yeah, you know, so it's it, true. I mean, in, in in the whole country. So, shouts out to my boy Julian, 1887. First, he got a petition to do that. I appreciate that, man. Keep doing what you're doing, and uh, if you if you care about it, look it up and support the movement. Yeah, for real. One of my boys, uh, Cadillac, he passed away. R.I.P. He's from Edenville. That's what's up. One man. of my boys. Yeah, man. Um, I used to work at a cigar lounge. And I, so that's how I knew a lot of different people from Orlando. And uh, yeah, super humble guy. He was, he was a goat in my eyes, for real. That's what's up, older cat? Yeah, older guy, man. I looked up to him, for real. He was cool. Shouts out to Cadillac, man. Yeah, Rest bro. in peace, brother. So uh, tell me about yourself, man. Well, uh, currently right now, um, you know, I teach firearms. That's, that's, that's my thing. I've been uh, living the gun life for, you know, I would say 12 more years, um, you know, uh, I wasn't always like this, you know, I always had guns, um, kept them at, you know, at home, cool with everybody. Everybody know Tony, I, I can go from Edenville to Pine Hills to Paramore. That was always me, Tony, I'm all over the place. But, you know, I had a few life-changing events and that changed who I am. So daytime, I'm a plumber. That's what I, that's what I do Monday through Friday. I'm a plumber, I'm a civilian, I'm a regular guy, but my passion is guns. So I teach firearms. I can teach you anything about a firearm you need to know, whether it's rifle, shotgun, pistol. Uh, that's my forte. I also have uh, my own range that I use. You know, as you know, you came out, you know. Oh, yeah. I saw I was there, guys. He taught me how to shoot a gun. He taught me how to how to hold a firearm correctly. You know, this whole time I thought I was, you know, holding the gun correctly. And I'm not. And it made me realize, like, you know, all these rappers and all these people. You know, that say they have firearms, they don't really know how to shoot the, the firearm. And that's big. Most of them. I would say the majority of them. I'm, I've heard that statement that you just said. I mean, I can't even count the many times where, you know, it's been somebody that's like, I've been carrying this gun for 10 years and I thought I was doing it right until you t t I met you. And it only takes 30 minutes. It's all about listening. You know, as long as you listen, you can learn. So that's the key. You listen, follow directions, and it, it makes sense. You know, if you, if you can walk, you can shoot a gun, but you just got to listen. You got to get get you some education. You'll be surprised how many people out here, uh, I mean, in the, I'm, I'm going to say in Florida, I was just going to say, we'll even say Orlando, that are carrying firearms every day, but don't know what they're doing. And that's where the tragedy comes in, because now you got rounds flying around, and you got, you know, you got innocent bystanders. You know, you don't, you don't, that's the main, if, if, if I got to use my firearm on to make sure that I'm hitting my attendant target, and mission is accomplished if that's what I got to do. Last thing I want to do is Miss Susie over there in the corner hiding with her daughter. You know, I done shot her daughter. I done shot both of them or whatever. So, yeah, more of those stories, you got to get educated and, and learn how to use those firearms. But, you know, I could tell that you had, you, you, you at least been putting some work in. And that's that's where it comes in. Like, yeah, something. Yeah, put yeah, yeah. something in. Do yeah. something. Exactly. Yeah, man. And um, it's hard, man. It's harder than when it looks. Like for real, because you could look at it and be like, "Man, I can't hit all those targets." All right, then go out there and do it. Yeah, it's. I mean, it it, it is hard, and I'll say it's easier to shoot a rifle than a pistol. But when you uh, pistol is what you're going to use. I mean, how many times? When what's the chance of you having a rifle? You know, when when if shit hit the fan, unless somebody break in your house, you know. So you're going to have a pistol on you the majority of the time. So you master the pistol. Rifle is easy. I mean, a kid can shoot a, a rifle as long as he can hold it. So that's that's where it's at. Put the work in. 
And uh, if that's your tool, learn how to use your tool. Yeah, there's a lot of tra- uh, tragedies that be happening all the time, man. Like me personally, I know a couple of people I went to school with and, you know, just cleaning out their gun, thinking that, you know, it was empty. That's One it. One in the head, boom. That's Shot him right in the head and killed him. Man, that's crazy, bro. You have to, um, that's why, you know, you got to learn, pay attention to what you're doing because, I mean, that's one of, the, one of the rules. But if you don't put the effort in to, to find out, you know, how am I, I got this firearm now. How am I supposed to clean it? How am I supposed to do this? But the, that's the number one rule, you, especially with cleaning. Check the firearm, make sure it's clear, get all ammo magazines out of the way so there's no mistake. But if you don't put the, you know, the work in, I put the, the effort in to figure out how to do this and make this a routine just like you do anything else. Just like you do anything else, if you work on your car, you know, I mean, whatever you do, you if you're going to have this and this is going to be a part of your life, learn how to use it. Learn what you're doing. That's the main thing. People just get out here, reach out, get you some education or you, I mean, shit, now you got YouTube. See, I didn't have that. I'm self-taught. I just put the work in, man. I put so much work in on the range. But now you, I didn't have the YouTube video for the guy to go look up, you know, and they'll tell you step by step what to do for for the free ninety nine. Yeah, you know, you can get all this education and then go put it in effect in the range. Try it at home, dry fire. I didn't have that, but now you have that. So take advantage of that. Exactly, exactly. And I know that you you be out there a lot, training a lot of different people from you know from kids to to teenagers to to women to men. Um, out of all of the people that you've you know you shot with and you, and you you instructed. Are the women better or the men? That's my question. <laughs> That's my real question. Hey, I'm going to have to keep it 100, man. 100? 100. Yeah, I'm going to keep it 100, brother. 100. Got to. So if you give me give me 20 green guys and 20 green females, I'm going all females, brother. I'm going fe- Man, I, I, I have seen it countless times. The husband and wife come out, or even if it's just a group of females and a group of guys, and everybody started at the same basis. Or the guy, you, typically most guys didn't shot a gun a couple of times. Girls never shot before. That's true. You know, they're nervous. They're shaking. I mean, literally trembling. Yeah. And they out shoot the guys by the end of the day because they listen. They listen step by verbatim what I'm telling them. They're listening. Well, you know, you, you got to come out. Well, I didn't shot a gun before, you know. So, and I'm telling them, okay, all right. So, this, you, go ahead and show me your grip. Grip is all off. I'm trying to show them how to hold it. And he's going to do it the way he's been doing it, you know, for however long he's been so-called carrying a pistol or playing with pistols or firearms, should I say. Yeah. Where the women come in and they listen and they execute. They execute. I mean, I've even had the husband and wife, and I tell the husband, look here, man, you drive the car and let her give her the gun. She's the shooter. You're not the shooter. <laughs> so you drive the car. And, and if something happens, you, you just get behind your wife because she's going to be the one to hit the target. You're going to hit Miss Susie. <laughs> yeah, not for real, man, because I remember working in downtown Orlando at that cigar lounge I was telling you about. And uh, I remember across the street, there was an argument going on and it was like a fight. The guy got kicked out of the club and they shut the door. So he was banging on the door. The guy shot through the door and killed one of this like a random girl. Man, see, The cops came up and they shot him right in front of me. They shot the guy in front of me. Wow. They, they laid out. Like, wow. almost like, I think he got hit like nine times or something like that. And he didn't die. He got paralyzed. Did he, what did they, did they take him to jail? They take him to jail. Yeah. But the girl ended up dying. She got hit in the head Damn. just by one bullet. Damn. You know? Damn, man. You just got to be careful out here. My buddy Billy, man, he just got shot in the leg. What, is he, what was he doing? He was out, he was out, uh, out of town because he does like a traveling gig, whatever. And uh, he, he was with his boy Jeremy. And there was a fight that broke out. And they were trying to jump his boy, and he tried to save him, and the kid took out a gun and shot him in the leg. Damn. That's another thing, man. Everybody, that's why, you know, I stress about exercising your, your Second Amendment right and getting these firearms and getting this training, because everybody has a firearm. Yeah. Everybody has a firearm. I mean, right now, I'm a shit hit the fan person. I can guarantee you, if the zombies came, if the zombies, we right now, zombies right now, Look out that window. If not, every house, every other house in this neighborhood has firearms. And I'm and I'm gonna say not not just one. That's why I always do when I teach my class, I say huh. every house should have as many pistols as there are adults and a shotgun and at least a rifle. Yeah. And the, and the t- students will be like, well, why? You know, I don't need well, because your neighbors do. I know I ain't finna walk out the door and me and my wife just got a pistol. You know, and shit hit the fan, and I look out the door, and everybody got rifles and shotguns. They, you know, we finna sit in the house till everybody clean. Yeah. So, 
do that and exercise your Second Amendment right. That's that's big. You I'm, need to do that because everybody else does. Somebody, everybody has a pistol, and, and on the road, every car has a pistol. Wow. That's true. That's one hundred, bro. I remember uh, my boy, heck, my roommate. You guys know Loki. He put me on to having like a firearm. You know, I didn't realize like, so. man, like anybody could, you know, just snap. Anybody could snap and take your life, and I don't deserve it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think there's a lot of innocent people that didn't deserve to get fucking killed. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So like the saying of like, yo, I'd rather be judged by twelve than carried by six. That shit is real. When I when I finally understood that, because I heard that saying growing up, I never understood it till I was a little bit older. I was like, wow, that makes sense now. I was like, when I was a teenager, I was like, man, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because there's no reset button. I'd rather spend some time in jail, right? Yeah, I mean, what well, even more so, you might not even go to jail. Exactly. You know, but I can tell my story. And you know, I I I'm here to say this is what happened to me, you know what I mean? So I mean you get that 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 saying is as real as it gets. And that saying too, like you know, if you're gonna take your firearm, firearm out, you better shoot him. And if you shoot him, you better kill him because it's it's better to to have one side of the story than two. That's what they say. I mean, that's that, that's what that's what I heard. I don't know. A lot of people don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> to each his own. But I say it's better to, to protect yourself. And the number one rule is if you ever have to use your fire, first thing you ask yourself is is if, is my life in danger. Your life needs to be in danger because you do have to explain, you know, why this man's on the ground or he or she or whatever it is. So is my life in danger? If your life is in danger, then you need to protect yourself and your family or your loved ones or wherever you're at. If you're at the store and you feel like you're going to be Superman, then be Superman and protect and save the day, save the day. But number one rule is my life in danger. You know, I I come I've been robbed. You know, that's what turned me into. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, but I was waiting for you to. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be that that gotcha, guy, but gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know what I mean? But yeah, what happened? Uh, Eatonville. You know, that's where I'm from. This, you know, this was a little while ago. It's over a decade ago, but we still there was a club called Kohas, aka Heroes. That's that's what that was the after hour spot. That's where we used to go hang out. That's the, after you leave downtown. That's the club that's gonna stay open at three, four in the morning, still serving liquor. So. That was my little spot back when I used to hang when I when I could you know yeah. make it. So I go to the club, um, get to the club. I see some guys on the corner. They are looking suspicious, but I'm from there, so I'm I'm thinking you know I'm good. So I'm like, man, they're gonna rob somebody tonight. Literally, those thoughts went through my head. Yeah. I go in the club, come out the club. Now it's like two guys there. Still didn't think anything about it. You know, I parked away from the parking lot because I lived there. I didn't want to pay the park, so I parked across the street. You know, in the cut. Yeah. So I'm walking to my car in the cut. And as soon as I got behind the club to where you couldn't see anything, I, you just feel this energy. And both those two guys came across the street. One, one put a pistol to my head. The other one went in my pocket. You know, he took my keys, took my uh, wallet, you know, took whatever I had. Yeah. And so I had my hands up and I'm like, hey, man, I'm from here. I'm from here. So I go to turn my head so I can see who it is. Maybe we can acknowledge each other. And the guy just literally just pointed the pistol. and was like, turn your head around. Yeah. And uh, out of body experience. I pissed on myself. I don't even. I've never. I don't even know what told my body yeah, to do that. Bro. But it was. I, I, my. I thought I was shot. Yeah, you know? of course. So, uh, that that changed my life. I mean, that was there to just show me how how vulnerable. Because once again, you know, I'm cool. That was the last thing. I last thought I had. Man, somebody gonna rob me, especially in Eatonville. So that changed my whole way of thinking. Made me move different. Uh, one more story. It happened again twice. Same place. It I happened went, twice. Twice. Same oh my place, gosh. I went back. Now, did you get a firearm? The, after the first time or the second time? After the second time, I always had a firearm. I okay, just, I okay. just never carry it because yeah. I'm, I'm I'm cool with everybody. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. You just that, didn't think of it. I didn't think of it. It was yeah. more for the house. You know, somebody yeah. breaking my house, so I didn't even. Even after then, still because I told myself I was not going back. You know, carrying a firearm, I still didn't, didn't think think about it. I ended up getting talked to going back like a year later. A uh, buddy from New York. Uh, a shout out to one shot too, man. Uh, but yeah, man, that's it. That was that's my boy name. Shout out, shout out to one shot, man. One hundred, so, yes, sir. So we went and uh, after the club, we circling around. We riding in the Acro. It's, it was like a movie, bro. The car cuts off in the back streets, almost on the same street that I didn't got robbed because it's dark back there. The car cuts off, and so I'm like, oh shit. This ain't happening. I know this ain't happening again. I told myself I wasn't coming back because I already know what time it is. So he gets out the car. He's like, oh, yeah, son, it's the alternator. And you know, we in the Acro Legend got rims on it. He's like, I just got to go tap on this alternator, you know, and get this thing started. So as soon as we do that, I look up down the street and I just see like eight shadows, hoodies oh. walking down the street. So I'm like, hey, I'm panicking. So just so happened, my, 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 my boy Robay, my barber, he stays two streets over. So I'm calling him. I'm like, bro. 
you got to come get us. You got to come outside. You know, niggas walking down the street. I know they finna rob. You know, grab a gun because he had a gun. Yeah, grab, grab the gun. Da da da. He's like, all right, all right, all right. So, like a movie, bro. As soon as I got the phone with him, the car crunk like literally right as the guys were right in front of the hood. I mean, we literally what? we threw it in reverse. We couldn't even go. We threw it in reverse, and he backed up to Robay's house, which is two streets over. And the car cuts off again right no. in front of Robay's house. Robay's coming out now. He didn't bring the fucking gun. He no, he didn't bring the gun. Bring the you told him to bring the gun. I he told did him it. To oh bring the gun. Shouts out to Robay too, man. Shouts out to Robay too. Hey, <laughs> bro. Robay didn't bring the gun, man. Damn, <laughs> bro. Why did you bring the gun, homie? Why did you bring the gun, Robay? Hey, bro. So Robay comes out and pulls his car to jump us. Yeah. He's he's asking me what happened. I got my back turned to the street. I'm telling him the story. The uh, one shot's hooking up the, the jumper cables. And Robay just grabs my shirt and says, run. Those guys, them niggas came around the corner, bro. Bro, like that, bro. Like, you're like. <laughs> ah, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You ever seen that meme? He's like, run. Yes, it was. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> that, that was ahead of his time. It was, it was yeah. run, literally. Yeah. I mean, so they take off. They run towards the school. I'm thinking gun house. I run towards the house, bro. Three of the dudes shot behind them. One dude ran behind me. He put the gun right on my, right, I mean, literally right right here on my waist. He's like, stop running, nigga, stop running. What? Bro, I went into <laughs> nitro speed. To this day, word, if you talk to this nigga, that I was the fastest motherfucker he, he, probably, he ever seen in his life. Because yeah. I disappeared. Yeah. But I fell. And I always say, God tripped me. Because if I wouldn't have fell, that's, that's, I probably wouldn't be here telling this story right Because he shot and you yeah. fell? No, I fell. And when I fell, it was so dark that I just, I literally disappeared. I, and I was on the ground, but I was rolling, and the fence stopped me. So a gate stops me. I'm under a tree, and I'm you like, you could hear the people coming. I could see him. He couldn't see me. It so was like I, a movie, bro. It was like a movie, bro. I could right now. I could. I could. I can get paid for that. That script, right? It was like a movie. I'm watching him. He don't know where I'm at. He's looking for me. So he thought I ran to the back door. Uh. That's where I was going. The back door was locked. So I would have got to that back door and went to open it. And, yeah. and then when I opened it, it would just been me and him back there. And bro, he was beating on this man door. I'm like, this is literally his neighbor. Like, this nigga stay two streets over from you. You beating on his back door, chasing me. He's like, open the door. And I'm under the tree. Watch, I'm coward. I'm like, I'm bro, I'm, I'm up against the gate. So Robay calls my phone. That was when the Sprint Palm Pilot had just came out, the big Palm Pilot. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I, had, I remember I, that. I that Sprint, so I had Yeah, that. Sprint. Bro, the tree lit up like a Christmas tree. I threw that phone over. That that phone's still back there in them in the woods somewhere to this day. I threw that phone back there, bro, because the tree just lit up. And then, and if he would look back, he would see me. And the guy just ran off. He ran off, bro. And I, from that moment, then I said, never again, never again, never again. Never and again. that's crazy, man. And you see all these artists dying, bro, as well. You know, I'm not trying to be negative here, but it's being real. These artists are being robbed and shit. So let's say that you're an artist, right? Mm -hmm. You got a whole bunch of jewelry on you. The guy says, yo, give me everything you got or I'm going to kill you. Do you feel like it's pussy to give up all your shit? Or do you feel like it's it's real just to die for it? Material stuff you can buy back. You can't get it your life back. Now, I will say it, there is, it depending on how it's done, you know, and too, you could, like this is why you, you train too. You'll never be faster than a guy that has a pistol already pointing at you with his finger on the trigger. I don't care how much, how fast you think you are. If this guy has a pistol pointed at you and his finger already on the trigger, he has the one up. So it's one of those things. Like, do I feel like he's still gonna shoot me after I give him my stuff? Or do I feel like I got a fighting chance? And if so, then there may be a role you have to play. You may have to cower and play that role to kind of get opportunities. So I would, me, I'm probably gonna just go ahead and get my stuff up. You know what I'm saying? Me too. Depending on how aggressive that is. If it's a little aggressive and I know that I do got a pistol on me and I, I, I do, I have educated myself and put enough training in where if I can take good advantage of shit, I might, you might need to just grab it. Yeah, yeah, You know what I mean? Yeah, shit, yeah. Fuck just the pistol. Just no. grab it. You know, and fucking, we finna, I'm fucking going to bite your hand. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, for real. But you got to make that decision. But when it's go time, it's go time. Yeah, man. Because like a lot of people... <laughs> You know, they, they put ego, like their ego is in the way. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, man, like, you know, I'm a man. You know, I'm going to fight for this. You ain't going to take this away from me. You know what I'm saying? But, like, you kind of have to be careful, too, because you kind of speak things into existence. That's for sure. I really believe in that, man. I believe in that also. You know, my boss, he told me, he's like, I'll never forget this. Shout out to Adrius. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not Big working. Shout out to Adrius. Yeah, shout out to Adrius, bro. He taught me a lot. Uh, he's like, brother, 
he took this out. He like took his phone out and he's like, bro. And he starts speaking. And the words start coming up while he's speaking. And he's like, do you think like this is the word? This is this is kind of like it's crazy how you could speak into existence and it comes onto the screen. So you don't think mm. like you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, like makes I, sense. I, I didn't know how to explain it like him, but he like he basically told me that. And it was like true. Like every time he was speaking, it was like writing itself. So it's like if if. If words are so powerful to do that, you, you're basically speaking. You're, ba- into you're basically speaking into existence because it's popping up right here. You know, it's crazy, man. What's energy? I mean, I'm a big energy person. I mean, that's speaking into it. If you, if that's what you believe, and you're gonna and you speak it, and and you're firm on it, your energy will provide that. I mean, I mean, as we're here, you know, on the show. I mean, yeah. even as me teaching the guns, that I mean, I spoke it. I said, okay, this is what I want to do, and so I put the energy in. You put the energy in to make that thing happen for you, bro. I mean, one thing, the world is yours. But you just got to live it and you got to make it. You can't expect it to happen for you. You can make that shit happen, man. You can do whatever you want to be. You can, you can, that's God bless America. That's why I love being in America. I mean, you can say, shit, I want to be the best fucking cake maker. I want to make the best fucking cakes. Fuck it. I just, I'm going to make the, shit, you can make you can. the best, best cakes. You can make the best cakes. You got social media now to show these cakes. Man, you can do whatever you want to do. Just, you got to put the work in, man. So that's a speaking things into existence. So if you speak it and you want it, go get it. Exactly, because you can speak it too. I mean, like, it'll come to existence, but like, you got to put the work behind it too sometimes. You, you well, know you what know I mean? What though? I didn't mean to cut you, but you could do negative shit too. You could speak some negative into existence. Exactly. You can. It's super true, bro. You know, people don't realize that. You know, I remember one of my, my buddies I used to work with, and when we first started, he's like, man, I'm broke, man, I'm broke. My boss is like, can you stop saying that? Mm-hmm. Stop saying I'm broke because you're basically saying it out loud. That's real. Just say, hey, man, I'm in a financial little little twist right now, but I'm going to be better. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't keep saying, I'm broke, I'm broke. Then you're going to stay broke. You're going to stay broke. <laughs> you know? Sometimes I be telling people, man, I'm rich, man. I, that's, I'm wealthy. That's it. That's it. You know that's what I'm it. saying? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know. Just some people are real negative, man. So you got to you gotta stay away from them, steer clear. Mm-hmm. Um, and having a morning routine is, like, super important as well. That's I, I agree with that. Like waking up and like, you know, stretching and like drinking water and, you know, maybe watching some motivational videos, maybe on the way to work. Like you got to have that mindset. I agree. Uh, and uh, how, how important is that to you? Like just waking up and like doing that that morning. What's your morning routine? What do you do? Well, I, I, I'm a worker. So excuse me. So I work a lot. You know, my morning routine, you know, basically, you know, get up, give me some me times. Some clarity. I try to get my, get myself twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, before I start my morning, you know, a cup of coffee, definitely some water. Need a cup of coffee. I gotta have. You know what? I must have, bro. I must have. I have to have a, a hot. I don't care if it's wintertime or summertime. I have to have a hot shower in the morning. Yeah, like, bro. I, it's like it's something about that steam, bro. It just depresses everything, and I'm like, yeah. okay, all right, let's get it. I'm ready to go. And let's you go. know, they say that hot showers are bad. They're starting to really? say that that cold show, well, like you know, showers, are where it's at. You know what? What you're saying? I got two of my three of my buddies, and they do a lot of that cold therapy stuff. Yeah, I heard now, about that. Now I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. I about two months ago, I brought the wife home a bottle of wine. I sat the bottle on the counter. And I grab. I had a six pack of beer. I grabbed my beer, and as I grabbed it, it knocked the wine bottle off the table. Well, I had just took my shoes off, so I had on socks. Yeah, bro, the bottle smashed my big toe. Mm. I mean, literally, and it, it hit my toe and bounced up. It didn't break wine bottle, so my toe was done. It was done. The, the toenail came off and everything. <sighs> Oof. So, moral of the story is, I was in so much pain. Uh, but my the buddy that's in the ice, he made me stick my my you know which most people would get your ice pack, but he made me just soak my foot in a, in a cooler full of ice. When I'm telling you that shit made the hell of a difference, bro. It changed everything. I mean, literally that night, the next day, all the throbbing had went away. The swelling started to go down, and so I just started doing the ice. Yeah, and just heavy heavy, and it changed. It made it heal faster. It made, I mean, the toenail. You just it, like. Like what? What do you mean with the ice? Like you put like a pack of ice, or no, you put it in ice? I put it, it bro. And the, and the crazy thing is, he told me this too. He was like, "Look, it's gonna be cold as hell at first, but your body will adjust to the temperature." And I'm like, "Fuck no, bro! It's a this, it's a cooler full of ice and with water." Okay, and so, ice and water. Ice okay. and water. So I got like an ice bath kind of book for your foot. Put my my foot. So okay. I got water up to you know past my ankle. Yeah. So I'm like, Ugh. so my toe hurt. And I'm like, all right, fuck it. And I'm not big on pills and shit, so I don't want to be taking all. Nah, the hell no. Pills. So. I stuck my foot in there and it was cold as shit. It was cold as shit. 
but within five, you know, five minutes, yeah, my foot just, you know, numbed out to it. And I, I soaked it in there for 10, 15 minutes. And it made, I mean, it made all the difference in the world. Hence, the toenail already came off. And typically, because I've done that to my fingernail before, it took like six months, you know, for the nail to come all the way up. This shit came off in like two months. And that was because of that ice water. So, shouts out to him for, for yeah, giving bro. this information. So, that, I mean, the cold therapy... I mean, it does this thing. They, it's actually a, that's big business right now. I don't know if you know a lot. Yeah, of people yeah, yeah. That. And that bio spine thing. I don't know if you've seen seen one of those before. It's that. like they do like I don't know, man. It's like the spine, like the stem cell treatment on your spine. You know, it's like LeBron James and Tom Brady on how they gotcha. they able to 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 stay athletic for so long. You know, because the normal yeah. person, man, like that's real. You know what I'm saying? Once you hit 40, bro, that's That's what they say. You know, they say once you hit 40, it's a wrap. I'm 44, bro. Damn, bro, you don't even look 44, 44, bro. I thought you were like 32 or some shit like that. I'm 44. I wish I was. I feel like I'm 32, you know. But you have children or Mm -hmm. how many? I have three three kids. I actually have a 21 year old. Damn, bro, you could be my dad, bro. (laughs) I'm 27, bro. Damn, bro. I I thought you was about 30. I was gonna be about 30. When you carry yourself, like yeah, I like the way you carry yourself. You carry yourself, bro. Yeah, OG man. I tried, Ways, bro. that's what's up. Yo, man. Yo, show show them the shirt, man. That shit fresh as hell, bro. GLT, baby. This is uh, this is the logo. These are the shirts. I'm gonna zoom in on that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's it. So you have different colors, or? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the process because I was jumping through, you know, t-shirt guys trying to find that right person. So I'm gonna that have color's the, nice. Yeah, I like this color. This was the last batch, so I'm gonna get you know multi. I want to kind of yeah, that shit's you know, fresh. You can rock them with you, Jay. You can rock it more so than just wearing it to the range. It'll yeah. be a shirt. You can say, oh, this shit match these shoes. Let me throw this on real quick. Yeah, and then represent the brand while you uh-huh. So yeah, guys. I mean, I mean, I went to, I went out to the range with him, man. He he taught me a lot of shit, bro. And there's a lot more that I need to learn. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna continue to keep going out there. He's out of Osteen, Florida, um, and that's like right around the corner for me. So I'm gonna put his link. I'm going to put his profile on, on IG, everything. So make sure you follow. Make sure you like. Show some love, man, because that's what we lacking around here. We got to start showing some love, man, especially yeah. people in the same city, man. That's you know true. what I'm saying? Like, we got to start helping each other out. So shout out to you, man. It was a pleasure. We're about to wrap things up. Yes, sir. You got anything else to say, my boy? Shit, it was good coming coming on the show, man. I appreciate you having me on here. Uh, you know, it's your boy, Gun Addict. You know, check me out on Instagram. I'll holler at your boy. Shouts out Dope Talk TV. I had a good time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We out of here. 100. 100. 100.